Hey guys, Mr. Schroeder here with another fourth grade math lesson for you. I'm going to go ahead and get started by reading the goal and we'll work our way from there. Students will be able to collect and examine data. Already, that might be a little bit puzzling to some of you, and I'm pretty sure it's because of this word right here, data. I've heard that word before, but maybe not so sure what it means. It's a tough word to understand because data could literally be anything. Any question that can get a response could be considered as data. This might be how tall your family members are, and you might want to list that down. That could be a data collection. How many bedrooms are in your house? How many steps are in your house? You could collect data on the circumference of your family members' heads. You could collect data on almost anything. And I have some data right here I'm going to show you in a second. But I just want to go through the goal and keep with it for one second by saying collecting data is easy. You ask questions, you get a response. Today we're going to work on responses that are numerical, so they deal with numbers. And then examining it, examining it is the harder part of the two. Okay? But I have some vocab here that's going to help us today as we examine the data that we collect. Maximum, minimum, mean, median, mode, range. Six different benchmarks is what we call them. I'll say that one more time. Benchmarks. I know they kind of look like vocab to you right now, but benchmarks are things we look at to help us better understand the data or the information that we have gathered, whether it be from how tall your family is or how many bedrooms. These benchmarks help us see things a little bit clearer, especially when there's a lot of numbers to deal with, especially in like business type things. But I know you know what maximum and minimum mean, because we've dealt with those before. Maximum is the most, minimum is the least. So right away, I'm going to pull up my data now that I collected just this weekend out on the ice. This had to be fishing related, I know. Here's my data. I caught six fish this Saturday. All crappies. And I want you to take a second. These are the six fish that I caught. I want you to... Um, you can pause the video if you want and try to find the maximum length of a fish I caught and the minimum length of a fish I caught. And then I'll write it down on the board. Go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, if you've paused it, you're probably done by now. I'll show you. The minimum fish that I caught, the smallest fish that I caught that day in my data collection was 8 inches long. It's the least amount. I'm going to go ahead and write that down as, I'm going to write low and in this case, it's eight inches. Yeah, okay, so I look back and I say, what's the maximum I caught? Well, the maximum length of a fish, this 12 incher here, even though my 11 incher might have been a little bit fatter, I think, due to my drawing, but the 12 incher is the longest fish I caught. It's the most, or the high. I'm gonna write down the maximum being high. They're opposites of each other, and 12 inches was the max. Okay. Now, I'm going to actually jump down my list a little bit, all the way down to range. Okay. The reason I'm talking about range right after max and minimum is because you have to use the maximum and the minimum to find the range. In this case, or in all cases I should say, the range is the maximum subtract the minimum. Okay, I'll write that down. Max minus min. I hope you can still see that. Good. The max minus the min. In this case, my max was 12. My minimum was 8. And if I subtract that, I get 4. 4 inches. So, all of my fish that I caught that day in my data collection are all within 4 inches of each other. There's no greater jump between fish than 4 inches. That's pretty good, okay? So all of them are about the same size. You can have uh, ranges that are, you know, it'd be a lot different if I caught a two inch fish in this case, because then my range would be 10 inches. And it's a little bit more unpredictable as to what's gonna come out of the hole when I pull it through. It's maximum minus the minimum gives you the range. Another way to look at this is in class, if kids are actually here, I pull one up, the shortest kid in class, let's just say they're this tall. And then I pull up the tallest kid in the class, and let's just say he's this tall. Well. There's your range between those two, okay? Every other kid in the class will fall between those two, the maximum and the minimum, aka here's your range, 
right? So now I'm gonna move on to the next. You've got three out of the six benchmarks for assessing your data, or I should say examining your data, because that's what the goal is, right? Examining your data. I'm gonna move this just a little bit further so you can see that. Now, okay, I'm gonna jot these fish down on the board so I can move the board out of the way just for a second. I have an eight, nine, two tens. I have an eight inch, a nine, two tens. I'm gonna keep going. I have an 11 and a 12, and that's it. Okay, those are all, those are all the inches of crappie that I caught. Now, now that I have them in order, it's a little bit easier to do um, all of them, to be honest with you. I'll start with the mode, okay? The mode, here's my data collection. I like to say this, and you can repeat me um, at home. Mode's the one you know the most. I'll say it one more time just so you hear it for sure, because I know a lot of you probably didn't repeat that in the awkwardness of your living room. Mode's the one you know the most. And when I look at my data collection on the inches of crappie I caught, which one occurs the most? Well, there's not a lot of data here, so it's pretty easy to see. What crop, what length crappie did I catch the most? I caught a 10 inch or twice. No other one was that much. So 10 inches is my most. Or excuse me, the one that I know the most, excuse me, because a lot of kids confuse that with maximum, but the one I know the most, which I put in quotes here for mode, know the most. There you go. So I know that one the most. I'll write that down as 10 inches. Okay. Now I have two left. I'll go to the median. Okay. The median. And I'm going to make a little drawing here. See if you can guess what I'm drawing before I'm done. The median. It's a road. The median is the middle of the road. Okay. The middle of the road. I'm going to add kind of a process for this. Now that my numbers are in order, I love putting them in order because it's going to make this median super easy to find. I'm going to cross off the most and then the least and then continue that process until I find the number that's in the middle, okay? And we'll have two numbers in this case, but I'll, I'll show you how that works, okay? I cross off eight, I cross off 12. The maximum and the minimum are gone. Now the new minimum, cross off nine, cross off 11. In this case, I have two numbers that are the middle, but since they're the same number, that now is my median. So it's 10 inches. Okay. If my data collection had an extra number in it, let's just, we're just pretending in this case, my data collection changed and I caught a seventh fish. So I had an eight, nine, 10, 10, um, 11, 12, and a 13. I wish, but I didn't. Now it's the same process to find if this is my new data collection, the median's the same way. I just cross off the most, or the least, then the most, the least, then the most, the least, the most, and it came out to the same thing in this case, but you work your way to the middle of the road. That's what the median is. Now, it's a little bit harder when you have like 20 numbers that you collected, but you can work your way down to it, okay? And then finally, I'll go back to my original data collection, which is eight, Cut one eight, cut one nine incher, two tens, and eleven, and a twelve. Okay, making sure you can see that. Good. Now, the mean. Okay, this is the last one I'm going to do with you. It's the last benchmark, and I saved it for the end because it's kind of the toughest one. It's it sounds mean because it is mean to you. It makes you do a lot more work. When I look at my data collection and I have six numbers, I'm going to give you the process first, or like the formula, and then I'll go to my data collection and find my mean. Okay. So my mean is when I add all, then divide by how many there are. 
number of them. I'll, hope, I'll make that make more sense right now. My first step is to add them all. Okay, I have to add all of these numbers. Okay. 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 10 plus 11 plus 12. I'm going to put some numbers that work well together. 12 and 8, that makes 20. 9 and 11, that makes 20. So now I'm at 40. 10 and 10 make 20. So that gets me, if I added all these together, and I'll just do this really quick just so you can see the process. It would give me 60. I caught 60 inches worth of fish that day. That's not the mean though. I'm missing one step. I added all of them, that was step one. Step two is divide by how many fish or how many things you collected. I collected data on six fish, so I'm gonna divide that number by six. Pretty easy extended fast fact for you, okay? If you're, when I, I am gonna give you an example to try at your house. If this is a hard problem to do, use a calculator or use your mom or dad's phone. 60 divided by six is 10. My mean, is 10 in this case, 10 inches. Now it doesn't happen all the time where your mode, your median, and your mean all come up to the same thing, okay? In fact, that rarely happens in a lot of data collection. But I want you to know that the mean is actually also known as the average. The average fish I pulled out of the ice on Saturday was 10 inches. So if a buddy asked me, hey, how did it go out there last weekend? I could say, you know what? On average, the typical fish, the mean fish I caught, was about 10 inches, which was a pretty nice crappie. So that could help them understand whether they maybe want to go out there or not. Like I said, we collect data for a lot of different reasons, okay? You might collect data to see how big people are in your class. You can order shirts for your whole classroom. Um, but this is just one example. I'm going to have you do an example now on your own. You're going to collect these six benchmarks, okay. you're going to need a notebook for this because you're going to have to record this information. You're going to collect data, I'm going to say, on six things, just like Mr. Shorter did. Actually, I'm going to go with seven. That way your median will be a little bit easier to find for you because if you have an even number, you might end up like with two numbers like we did. Seven people, you're going to give them a call, whether it's grandpa, make sure you check in, see how they're doing. Grandpa, cousin, friend, you could email. Um, and you know, if if they don't get back to you, you can make up a number. It's, it's not a big deal, but you can definitely get a hold of them. And I want you to ask them how many pets they have. Specifically, I want you to ask them how many dogs and cats, and that's combined. So if they have two dogs and two cats, that's four pets. Okay? Or if they have one dog only, that's just one. You combine those two for each person that you ask. And I want you to record your own data collection. And I want you to take those numbers and I want you to find the maximum of the data, which friend or relative has the most cats and dogs, which one has the minimum. Maybe there's ones that have zero. And you know what? That counts in your data collection because if you ask and they report nothing, that counts because that's part that's going to go into your range and everything else. The mean, the average amount of pets that a friend or family member has. The median, kind of the middle of the road, not always the same as the mean, but oftentimes close. The mode, who, not who has the maximum number of pets, but what number of pets is the most frequent? Like maybe there's, maybe you called and three people said that they had three pets. Well, that's quite a bit of people having three pets. So that might be your mode. Mode's the one you know the most. And finally, your range. Well, if one person has 100 pets, hopefully they don't have 100 cats and dogs, and somebody has 10, 100 minus 10, the range would be 90. Everyone falls within 90 of each other on the pets. It's not gonna be 90, hopefully. Um, hopefully you're gonna have a lot smaller numbers even probably numbers less than my crappie lengths. But you collect your data now, and I want you to take some notes, jot it down. You might wanna label who's what, and then find your benchmarks. That way you are going to collect information from your family and friends about their pets. You are going to examine it by finding your benchmarks and 
Obviously, the data is what you're asking them, right? You're collecting the information from them. Email me any questions, concerns. I'm sure your teacher could help you as well. I'm sure we'll upload this to the class website. I know this one got a little bit longer. Um, if you need to slow down, replay any parts of the video or anything like that, please do. Um, have a good day. We'll talk to you later.